Okay, hey guys, Connor here with Chrome Designs, and thank you for watching this video tutorial. Now, today I'm going to be showing you this Rubik's Cube effect in Cinema 4D. Now, before we get started, it's not exactly very complex in its shape, uh, purely due to the fact that, as you see here, oh, I'll go to the other way where the light's more bright. Go to the top, actually. As you see here, it's green and green, whereas on an actual Rubik's Cube, there'll be different colours. So there'll be a big square that's the actual thing, and then there will be different three rows of three uh, separate squares, and on them, there'll be a different colour. Now, that's a bit too advanced for this tutorial, uh, so I'm just going to show you a basic one now, and um, maybe more advanced one in the future to come, and maybe two parts. But anyway, uh, if you go on the objects icon here, you'll see there's loads of different cubes. This is because I'm not exactly familiar with the clone object, so I'm going to be doing the newbie way of copying and pasting. So let's get started. File and new. And just add in a cube. Simple. Hit the fillet or fillet uh, box and change the fillet radius to 50. Uh, 15 and you see that is okay there then with that selected hit control C and control V which copy and pastes it so I will go to edit copy and edit paste but control C control V is much quicker and then on the X you want to type in 200 apply control C control V um, Edit to minus 200, so we'll go the other side, the one in the middle. So 0, minus 200, and 200. Now, on that one, you go control C, control V, and change the Y to 200 as well, I believe. There you go. And then go to control C, control V, and go to 0 on X. Apply. Actually, I didn't control C, control V, it. copy and paste it. So go, go to zero again. Nope, my bad. Change the Y to 200. Now the Y keep kept at 200. But do you want the X to be at zero? Apply. Then control C, control V. And the X to be at minus 200. Not minus 200, sorry, just 200. Uh, common sense will probably figure this out for you guys. Uh, no, it's kind of tedious, maybe watching me fail as I am. But control C it, control V it. Uh, y, I think will be 400. That's it. And then control C, control V it. Yeah, yeah, Y would be. Keep Y the same and X at zero. Apply. And then last one. And I'll show you why in a sec. Change the X to minus 200. Apply. And that is it. You should have a good array of these cubes. Now what we want, we need three more stacks of these and we'll be done. So hold down shift and go from top to bottom. Uh, top to bottom and it's select all of them and go to edit and copy and then edit and paste and it will just paste them all and if you get the blue arrow and look down in the coordinates down here you see what one is changing so it's the Z so change Z to minus 200 because that's the dimensions of the cube and then control C control V again and change it to minus 400 so it'll move it just a little bit more and that is about it uh, select off them here there is all the different cubes so you got the basic shape for the Rubik's all that's left to do is to add the colors so if you just double click down here in the materials icon it'll bring up the thumbnail of material double click on it again go to color and the first one I'll make white as you know, you don't really need white to be fair. I'll make red. Okay. 
and just keep doing this process, double clicking, I'm going to make this one green, solid green, there we go, green is blue, a little bit of blue, there, dark royal blue, okay, then you can add a yellow, yellow, um, I think that's all the colours, isn't it? Uh, as well as white, obviously, but you can just leave the white ones as they are. You know what I think it is? Anyway, if not, uh, my mistake, you know that there'll be another one. But anyway, it's a Dragomon. So with a red one, just choose a point on the cube and just drag it on. And just pretty much drag and drop it. Anything you want to be white, you just leave it as it is. Should just do this face to show you for time purposes so you don't get too bored. Green there, and a red, I think. And there you go, that's basically one face. And you just keep doing this to throughout all the other squares, not hard, drag and drop. But there you have the basic Rubik's Cube shape. But as you've seen at the beginning, it had a uh, plane. So, click and hold on the square, go to plane, and I like to type in nine, seven times, don't know how many times that was, but anyway. Just tap one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, that was no, I can't count, can, can I? Anyway, and then once you've got the plane, it might be just halfway through the square, so just drag it down, just under the bottom. And if you go to file, shader, and new key, new key is basically just a glossy blue that gives it a bit of reflection. And then to actually make it have a reflection, you need to add a light. So just go to the four arrows, X arrow, sorry, expanding out, drag it up, maybe across this side because it's the side that we're working on. Just render that out, and you see that it's got the reflection. But to get the shadows, you need to go to Shadow and Shadow Map Soft. Render it out again. And there you go, you have the shadows. So just fill out the whole cube, uh, very basic. Not very complex because you don't even go into clonal objects or even the different surfaces. But it's a tutorial in Cinema 4D, hopefully, <clears throat> hopefully expanding your skills of the program. Uh, I know mine are. But anyway, thanks for watching this video, guys. I uh, would appreciate a like and a comment. And subscribe if you haven't. And that's about it for me. Uh, see you guys.